Hello, hello, and welcome back to the channel. Today you join me in this rather <laughs> bleak and rainy uh, June, was it Friday now? And today I'm going to be showing you guys the, oops, I'm getting caught in a plant, model year 2020, uh, 69 plate, Lexus NX300H with the premium pack. Uh, so stay tuned for this video. So as I mentioned, this is the Lexus NX, which is the compact kind of to medium size Lexus SUV offering over in the States you get the GX and LX which are more like Range Rover Sport the big full fat Range Rover size here we only get up to the RX uh, which is kind of meant to compete with like Jaguar F pace I would say kind of car uh, maybe like the X5 as it is a wee bit smaller than X5 but anyway I digress so the NX sits just below the RX and that competes with things like your Volvo XC60 and Audi Q5 this particular car is finished in Mesa Red you're not really seeing the advantage of the <laughs> metallic paint today, but when the sun hits it, I'll put up a wee clip of that and you'll see how it sparkles in the sunshine. I've also, you'll notice, I've got my key uh, because it is a car to car from Lexus Glasgow and because of the coronavirus we've got everything all wee bagged up so you can't touch the key. Um, but anyway, we'll start off with the front. As you can see, this is the facelifted NX. We've got a big kind of spindle grill. If you get the F Sport, you can get this with the mesh pattern. All NXs in the UK are 300H, so that means you get the blue outline on the emblem for the Lexus logo. I do quite like these headlights, but I do prefer them with the tri LEDs, it just makes it a bit sharper looking. But as you can see, it's quite snazzy looking. You've got the little indicator below it. I've got attractive. 18 inch alloy wheels, as you can see we've got a nice thick sidewall for that kind of SUV crossover style. This one's got the mud flaps which is ideal for preventing dirt spray going up <laughs> the travel outside of the car. And overall the appearance isn't too bad and easy to clean, that's what I quite like about most Lexus alloy designs, they're quite easy to clean, they're not intricate and you can't get dirt stuck behind any of the spokes and anything like that, so something to pop out, or point out sorry. This car is fitted with the premium pack, so you get keyless entry and keyless go. Wing mirrors pop out when you do it, and you get the new style wing mirrors with the silver strip and the body colour on top. At night these light up, which I'll put a wee clip of that as well, and you'll see them lit up, which is quite nice. And overall you can see it's very origami looking at intricate metalwork, and not boxy like an Audi Q5 for example. Around the rear you can see it's pretty tight and taut. Got some semblance of fake events at the back there, but obviously uh, they're just plastic. And the exhaust is actually underneath the car. I hope you guys can see that. So open the boot, you can push the button on the fob or you can tap it there. And again the premium pack gives you this power lift gate or boot. And inside you get decent sized boot space. This one's fitted with optional rubber mat, which I would suggest that regardless of any car you're getting, just because it makes life so much easier, you can wipe it down instead of having to get it all uh, hoovered out and get all hairs or dirt stuck into the weave of the fabric. And usually there would be obviously be a partial shelf here, but being a curtsy car, we've not got that. Tap the button again, close, and jump down. Do its thing very slowly. But overall the rear, I quite like, I always quite like these jack, kind of jut out headlights or tail lights, or I like them when they first came out in 2015. But now Toyota have put it on the RAV4 and various products had starts to look a bit more Toyota now than Lexus, this kind of design, but it's quite nice and you get a wee kind of integrated spoiler. And I like this black cladding around the wheels, not everybody does. You get it in a variety of cars, but just I think it helps A, give the look of an aesthetic of an SUV type of car and B, when this car is older you're not going to get all the rust coming through that you would say you get in a traditional car like those two guys over there. So we get a hybrid badge down the side of the car again just to note it as a hybrid. And we'll just jump in, just before we jump in we get the Lexus sill plate. Get a little Lexus NX embroidered on mat underneath, but Lexus on the he's got the optional rubber flo floor mats. Like so drop him. Oh, and as I said, it's keyless go, so put the key down in the middle there. Fitting the brake. 
car starts up, you get the nice telescopic steering wheels, all electric. That does its own little thing. I'll turn the fan speed down quickly, but that's just done by rotating this little knob here, like so. Fan temperature, or sorry, climate temperatures, you can tap it, touch of a button, like so. A bit different from the IS, which is like a touch capacitive button, you slide up and down. This is like a little knurled button you touch there. Heated seats. I love the analog clock you get in Lexus cars, more of them should have that, but the IS has it, and I believe the ES has it, and the LC has it, so that's quite nice. As you can see, overall quality and material. Always looks good, good in the camera. I think the Lexus interiors in the rather stitched dashboard and the padded bit here, which is nice and softly damped, and you can see how squidgy that is. Got a nice big glove box, it's pretty impressive how big it is here. And it's soft and lined with the fuzzy stuff. That was just me touching the button again. And I'll give you a quick look at the door panel. And again, you can see that you know, the stitched plastic continues across there. Rather kind of or the other end when the door rests where your arm's gonna be that soft touch plastic and that scratchy plastic there. And this has got the black leather. And it's got the white stitching. Quite a soft grain, it is the man-made leather leather even. As you can see, so it's not splash as anything as the proper leather, but it does not too bad job of it. Probably wipe down and maybe last longer. This is quite a funky area, so we've got your wireless charging for your phone, you can turn that on like so. Lift that up and it gives you a little bit more area. Lined with the fuzzy stuff, and you get a USB port, an auxiliary cable hole, and a charging port. One of the quirkiest, oh, one of the quirkiest features even in the NX is this. You get a little mother, so you can look at yourself, do your makeup, or do your hair, or whatever. It's quite cool. You get a little rest here for your the touchpad. And it's all really to control the infotainment on Lexus, so it's quite easy when you're doing it stationary. And I've had a couple of Lexus products and still own two Lexus cars, and I can honestly say <laughs> this is quite a tough thing to do when you're driving. Uh, so, what I typically would do if you were having it, you could have it in split screen. Let's try and get it on something exciting. Um, I usually leave it on something like that. Or if you were going somewhere in your sat nav, do a split screen like so. I quite like it in split screen, it just leaves you having to fiddle around with it. Uh, and then your radio stations. It's a little bit harder to do when you're driving because you're really relying on touch capacitive to go there and push down. So if you wanted heart radio like so. But the sound system is too bad. And from memory, I believe uh, Lexus basic sound systems that this has are Pioneer, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe they are. And then you can upgrade to the Mark Levinson sound system, which I would probably recommend doing, especially if you're paying the price of this car, uh, which is with the equipment of the Talit Paint and the optional premium pack. I think it's about 59,900 odd pound and some change uh, when I looked on the configurator yesterday. So that's that, and it's just below that £40,000 premium tax that we have the joy of here in the UK. So if you're over £40,000, I think the luxury tax, the euro tax per year is like £465, something like that, for the first six years, or second to six year, because the first year is your VED, which is £800 for this. Uh, but if you're below £40,000, which is this is just, you end up paying £140 for the euro tax. 145 around that kind of area, so it is about £325 saving being below the £40,000 threshold. But you do miss out on the F Sport or the Takumi uh, if you're looking at the NX below the £40,000 threshold. So, just something to consider. So, if we jump back into looking at the car, the gauges and that's been this kind of standard spec, as you can see, just looks like the 2014 Lexus IS gauges, which is kind of no bad thing, but a bit like my mum's car. You can see that the tachometer on the left, which a typical Lexus fashion, twist this and it changes to a rev counter. So that's if you're in your eco power charge mode. Eco mode, you can see the blue comes up there, and it makes the car quite lifeless. But I like it in sport around town, and usually just to give it the extra oomph from the battery, and then I put it into eco mode if I'm on the motorway. Easy to operate, you've got your wipers on the right, lights on the left, so you can leave it on auto, which probably most people will do. but. As such, there's full beam and auto. 
you've got little uh, plastic gear changers on the left and right hand side behind the steering wheel but because it's a CVT transmission I really don't see the point in that uh, so you've got reverse, you've got your camera all the way down for drive and I would just really leave it in drive you're not really going to be shifting around putting that in different modes as you can see if it hopefully it'll pop up but you're not, this isn't the kind of car you're going to be changing it maybe it was an X3M you'd be running through the gears but I really don't see you doing that in a Lexus hybrid but the technology in this is impressive so we've got your lane departure warning your adaptive cruise control cruise controls down here you push in and down to set you can cycle through all your LCD display here so you can get through your traffic signs there if you're going to 60 national speed limit quite handy compass, also have your sat nav instructions will go in there like so down the right hand side auto high beam electric tailgate, obviously if you get your blind spot monitoring and that, that would fill in these buttons here heated steering wheel which I think is always a nice feature like part of the premium pack but especially if you're in Scotland you're going to appreciate that most mornings as you can see on the right hand side here, electric windows all around, one tap, and you'll see how softly they close, I'll do that again. Like all Lexuses for a long time since I've known them, I've had that soft close feature. As you can see again, you've got the kind of rather padding on the door. This is like a softish plastic, that's quite hard but stitched to look fancy, and that's a wee bit scratchy. Relatively small door bins, which is a wee bit of a gripe since it's an SUV. If it's a wee bit taller, you could probably fit more in there. But we do have a little bottle storage, or bottle storage even, here for your Lexus water. And obviously there's another one there. The keys are in there at the moment. And there's also a little shelf there, which I'm not quite sure, it's not really deep enough for much. Let's see, you can probably put your car key maybe in there, but it's going to slide out and accelerate, uh, and then your CD player's in there. So if we jump out, I'll quickly show you guys the back of the car before we go a quick drive. One thing I will point out is, if you have a quick look, you'll see the door sill is covered by the door, so that means your legs aren't going to get dirty getting in and out of the car. It's quite a cool feature. How does he see seating for free? Relatively flat floor. Again, this is optional, rubber floor mats, but you put the carpet underneath which Lexus floor mats are always quite nice but anyway I digress so you can easily get three people in there quite like the fact this is all covered in some sort of material fabric as well just to prevent your feet getting caught under there and getting any damage like so but yes I'm 5 foot 11 for reference knee room's not too bad there's a wee mat pocket there some air vents Headroom's actually pretty good and you can adjust the seat as well so if I do this lean back if you pull the lever at the side you want to do more boot space you could lean up more upright I've still got the two fingers worth of headroom so just depends what you're carrying in the back if you've got nothing in the back you can have that reclined all the way that's quite good and I've got a wee armrest here with some cup holders up the front like so and we get a good view out and you're sitting quite high up being in an SUV this one is the same fit with the premium pack so you do get the tinted windows in the rear ideal for kids if it's a sunny day as well and you can see you've got your speakers in the back there what do you think of the wee chrome roof rails? I think they're just there for aesthetic appeal but they're quite nice So have a quick look under the bonnet and then we'll go a drive. So down here, pull this lever. It's impressive. It may be so quiet you'll be hearing, but that is the engine running. Uh, because obviously I've got the heated steering wheel on, sat nav and that was all on. So this is the two and a half litre Atkinson Cycle four cylinder petrol engine combined with the Bashi pack which is in the boot or under the boot shall we say and that provides a total output of 197 horsepower 195, 197 depends where you read online it means it's 0 to 60 in mid 7 seconds which isn't too bad you can probably expect about 37, 38 miles to a gallon during the summer months I've got about 37, 38 in this recently and unfortunately when I've had this previously I had this uh, one of these in February time about 32 
in the colder months so just bear that in mind you're not going to get 40s or 50s to a gallon in this but it's not too bad considering it's a petrol SUV where something like this is getting about 23, 24 to a gallon so you can kind of see the 15 years <laughs> of change between the two and there's not much in it now from the Mark II RX to the first gen NX and you can see typical Lexus fashion we've got all the sound deafening in that under there and we've got all the orange to, high, to kind of highlight where the hybrid electric high current batteries are uh, not batteries, the wires everything's easy to use or top up realistically if you're owning this car screen wash over there move a bit of coolant in it now and again and that's you, everything else to take to the dealer once a year and that's you uh, and obviously it's going to be worthwhile taking it to the dealer to get that um, hybrid battery pack warranty for the next year so if you have a quick look down you can see Lexus have always done this kind of rubber trim seal just to make everything extra quiet well, no, I wouldn't say always always but there's a lot since my 2007 IS that's the earliest that I've owned I can see they've done that around parts of the front of the car to make it quiet so we're just going to set the cameras up and we'll go for a drive so now you join me inside the NX and we're going on a quick drive as soon as you pop into reverse the handbrake comes off quick nice and there's no uh, foot brake which I am most grateful for because those things are sometimes a pain in the ass and you forget you've got them or if you're used to driving a manual and you jump into one of these you feel like you're going to hit the brake down instead of putting the clutch down obviously it's not got a clutch being automatic but anyway digress so as we're reversing well, gadgets are telling me we're doing all this in electric battery mode slowly jumping down you can hear how quiet it is apart from obviously the various sensors doing their thing I will point out I have driven one of these with a higher spec and you do get the 360 camera that is pretty impressive so if you're maybe a nervous parker or you would benefit from something like that then definitely go and get the 360 camera pack just because if it saves your camera on a wheel or damaging your car even once it's going to pay for itself I always feel like that's a worthwhile incentive for some people if you're maybe nervous about paying money for something like that but then if you damage a car a month later or two months later or whatever and you end up with a bill for three or four hundred pounds you may as well have just got the sensors, the cameras and stuff like that and that does save you any grief so out on the road as you can hear the petrol and electric motor work seamlessly ideally this is kind of where the hybrid shines uh, when you're on long motorway journeys you're really just using the battery uh, you're just really sorry you're using the petrol engine and you're not really getting the best fuel economy out of lugging those batteries around I think occasionally the batteries plug a little bit into the tyres can form momentum just to kind of help it along but if you're going 65, 70 there's not really much the batteries can do but anything below say 30 miles per hour that's where the hybrid shine and every time you brake the regen goes into the batteries and you can see it charge up slightly so I'm in sports mode I'll put the foot down CVT goes a wee bit loud and that's as it for so it's relatively fast just off the line I'd say about what, 2 seconds, 3 seconds to uh, 30 miles per hour and that was a slight incline so it's not too bad if you really want to uh, thrash it and floor it but the main thing to take away from this is it's quite comfortable if you're really detached from the road and that's what Lexus kind of ethos has always been uh, apart from obviously from the ISF and LFA but their regular cars always want to give their customers a nice relaxing quiet ride and this NX doesn't disappoint on that front you can hear the batteries kind of whirling and if you had the radio on you would guarantee not hear anything from the outside world put the foot down again so the IS comes with a little acoustic sound generator just to kind of disguise some of that CBT whereas oh, there we go whereas NX there's no such buttons so you're really just relying on hearing <laughs> everything that comes through oh got dogs out in the road just turn down here the excitement of driving through another part of Glasgow I'm not used to but anyway easy to navigate, good visibility out I should mention as well I do quite like the high position, I'm very 
torn between SUVs and kind of sports cars. I just quite like low down feeling, especially a convertible, like a Z4 or something. Uh, and then when you're up high in an SUV, you get a completely different perspective of the road, and it's just so comfortable. You get great visibility out if you turn over. The seat pillar's got a little bit of glass in it as well. You can probably see the top of the camera right there. Uh, so that would be your blind spots, not, not really compromised too much. And I've come to a dead end. Uh, one second. I'll let out a <laughs> Sunday drive on a Friday morning, but I'll let you guys enjoy the kind of noise of the car and the kind of perspective of it all. As we're going, I'm going to turn between the two cameras anyway, and you'll be able to see me flip between, so that's why that camera's there. shorts and a rainy day but anyway so yeah if you're interested in an economical compact-esque kind of SUV the NX is definitely something to have a look at definitely not got the biggest boot or the biggest rear seats if you're going to be carrying three kids regularly or something like that maybe worthwhile we'll jump up to an RX or even cross shopping it with another brand but Lexus does have a strong Reputation for liability and customer satisfaction. They won awards left, right, and centre here in the UK. And right in North America, the bigger brother, the RX, the best selling 4x4 for years over there. So that just kind of stands true for how good these cars are. As I said, I would recommend you have a quick look at it. You might not consider a Lexus NX previously, and um, might not be brainwashed into thinking, say, the Mercedes Audi or BMW. But if you are going to look out with the field, you can have a look at the Jaguar F Pace, which is probably very similar money to this. Uh, you can get the obviously going to get diesels or petrols with that. The Volvo XC60, which is pretty swish. I know they've had some liability issues, Volvo, uh, in comparison to Lexus. But if you're going to be leasing one of these cars, it's really not going to be your. I'm not going to be bothering about that. Whereas if you're buying a car long term, they're really limited to something Japanese, and probably the Lexus is probably the most luxurious Japanese one you can get in the UK right now for reliability if you're going to keep this car six, eight, ten years. I think that's going to be at least problematic at the bunch of them. And this powertrain's been tested. Oh, well, if you buy one now, it's been about what seven, eight years it's been out now. So, any of the kinks have probably been worked out by Lexus and Toyota throughout the time. And the 300 h powertrain's pretty bulletproof now, so it's not the most exciting drive. Uh, but overall, you get relatively good MPG. Hit the seal tune, this is 171 grams because the tax system now is all over the place. It really doesn't matter uh, what's happening now because if you get the, there used to be well, my, from my mum's 2014 IS, the tax is only £10 a year for that. It's the same powertrain as this, but now because of the luxury tax and stuff like that, you're paying such a high number. Uh, it doesn't really matter if you're getting this or a Toyota I go or a like CT or something like that, you're still paying £140 if it's below £40,000. So, if you're a little benefiting Cayman's person, have a look at that. But the plug-in hybrids are going to be better Mitsubishi Outland or Volvo XC60. Two plug-ins that come to mind when I think of plug-in. But that's the ones I would consider at the moment. Uh, but yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel below. I know I ranted a lot bit there for a minute, but uh, hopefully you made it to this far through the video. Uh, and I will see you next video and make sure you subscribe to my channels. I appreciate if you subscribe when I'm trying to get to a thousand and that'd be amazing if we could get us there. Thanks very much for watching and I'll